Imagine a team sport where without words, the only communication you have with your partner is through touch, the subtle shifting of weight, even a little bit of telekinesis. Sometimes you just think about something and they'll do it. Well, competing in either of the three equestrian events at the Olympic level, be it dressage, show jumping or cross country, the pillar of your success relies on the bond you have with your horse. And that is something horse trainer Tara Edwards knows very well. She sees it every day with her students. Chemistry between a horse and rider, every horse and rider is a different animal. It takes years to curate enough trust between horse and rider to jump fences and perform flawless dressage routines. But what kind of bond could I form with the beautiful Thessaly in one afternoon? Well, Tara invited me to her family's Willow Hill Farm in Keysville to find that out. Ready to do this? Hmm? We're ready. Now I do have some experience. I've been riding since the age of six and used to compete in show jumping back in the day. But it's been a few years, so Tara started me out slowly. Your position's looking good. First getting used to the 15-year-old mare's walk. And then trot. <laughs> and then the canter. These are all basic moves you'd see in the dressage ring. Eyes forward and straight. The rider needs to be exactly. in constant communication to be able to accomplish all this, as well as be looking one or two moves ahead of the animal. But they need to be looking and a little bit of turning, and you'll see those horses zoom, turn right around in the air, and they know where they're going. Another thing, do you hear how hard I'm breathing? Now, don't be fooled thinking the Remember horse does all the work ahead. in these events. Constantly squeezing, kicking, leading the horse is taxing right. on your body if you are not used to it. You can't have weak core and be able to ride. And it's pretty exhausting. And anybody that actually takes a lesson quickly figures that out. After some foot, uh, I mean, hoof work, it was time for the jumps. We got this, Cecily. Don't you worry. We started small, making sure to lead with my eyes, getting my hands in the right place and then let Thessaly carry us over the cross rail. Piece of cake. We then added a second cross rail. Not too bad for this out of practice rider. And then we kicked it up a notch. <laughs> so you feel the height, right? Yeah. <laughs> that is when my lack of practice certainly caught up with me. I had trouble keeping my leg in position, which as you can imagine, it's pretty important for balance. Do a jumping release where your hands get well in front of your shoulders and your feet stay where they belong. After a few like tries of consciously toes. keeping my toes up and legs down, <laughs> I got better. Still yeah. not Olympic status, however, just proving the point that so much goes into every move while on horseback. This is much more than just someone sitting on top of a horse and letting the horse do its own thing. Yeah, it's a lot of fitness and then timing and coordination and trust and knowing how that horse tends to jump. So how did I do? So uh, what do you think, maybe like three, four more lessons and I'm at the Olympic level? Yeah, why not? All right, all right. So gold may not be in my near future, but I was reminded of how special the bond is between a horse and a rider. Good girl. And I had a great time doing it. For NBC5 News, right. I'd give you a high five, but you don't have hands. I'm Vanessa Mishanya. <laughs> <laughs>